it's another delicious day here in the Let's Make Food from Food Kitchen, and today we're making our Christmas duck. Merry Christmas to everyone out there. So let's get started. I have a duck. I have rinsed it. I have patted it dry. So I stopped there because I wanted to step by step through the rest of the process with you. Um, you need to remove everything that is inside, which we have liver and a neck. We have heart and kidney somewhere in there. Yep. Um, and don't don't throw this away. Kidneys. There's two kidneys. Kidneys, and then heart. Um, don't throw those away because you can make your gravy. You're gonna make a stock with these um, and make a gravy. If you have a pet, you can cook them and except the neck, don't give the neck to your pet. But the rest of it you can cook without any butter or anything and give it to your pet as a treat for Thanksgiving. So there's options. I'm gonna be making a gravy with mine. Um, so I've taken everything out and I want to just go through and trim the excess skin and fat. So when you get your duck, most of the time it has all of this skin and fat from um, the butcher left on there. I'm gonna take that off, and if I make the stock, I'll go ahead and put that in there. It'll be fatty, but it's gonna give a nice flavor. Um, so I'm gonna flip it over again. Check your skin, and just make sure that there aren't any feather um, backings still in there. You'll be able to feel them, it'll be pokey, and just pull those out. It's like when you're, oh, here's one right here. Here's one. Um, it's, it's like a fish bone, kinda. You just pull it out, maybe. <laughs> sometimes you gotta pop it like a zit and sometimes you gotta pull it out um, and you use tweezers or whatever you want but you don't want to consume those so just pull those out if you find any I don't often find them they're usually really good about getting them pretty well cleaned off um, okay I think we're good that's a little one there we go as you can barely see you can barely see them they're so can you see it they're so tiny okay so that is done I am going to go ahead and get another paper towel and I'm gonna pat it dry some more and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, just simply get into the the bird pits, the wing pits, armpits of the bird, um, and just pat it dry some more. Um, and I'm gonna get the board too because I'm just flopping it over into more of the, the wetness. Um, all right, so I flip this over. As you can see right here, there's a big pocket of fat and I'm gonna grab a little paring knife small tool that's easy to work with and just start slicing that off and why would I care so much about this I don't typically do this much for chicken but with duck it's very fatty while it's delicious partly because of the fat you want to get rid of as much as you can before you cook it um, and there's a little bit of a process to make your duck delicious but not oily and fatty and if you've ever had duck and you're like oh why is she making duck it's so fatty um, if you score it not like a musical score, don't write a song for it. If you score it with your knife, um, you're going to allow that fat to seep out and it will be delicious and juicy instead of fatty and oily. Duck has a lot of delicious flavor. Just make sure that you're processing it appropriately to get to where you need to be. All right, back to this side. I'm gonna take my serrated knife, these weren't doing the job, and carefully cut a few lines in the skin. And you wanna be careful to try not to do it um, too deeply. You don't want to score the meat, just the fat, and that's what's gonna help release some of it. So I'm just doing it a little bit on the back. The back isn't as bad. We are gonna cook this in stages. So you can see that I've just cut so far, <laughs> knock on wood, um, the fat, but not the flesh. You can see that the flesh is still intact. So that's the goal, that's what you're trying to do. I'm gonna just do it back here. I want that that to flavor our meat but not make our meat greasy so that is done I'm gonna take a little bit of pink Himalayan salt and sprinkle it and then also a little bit of thyme and this is the dried thyme from my garden that I've dried myself if you go and buy fresh thyme it works just great and then if you have some left over I will put the link down below for the video on how to dry that so you can save what's left for another recipe because you really don't need a lot but fresh is always better even if it's freshly dried. Okay, we've turned it over. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do more of the cuts. And you'll see that this scores a little easier. And that's because there's more fat here. And I'm just doing it so carefully because I don't want to cut that, that flesh, just the fat. So you can see here, let me tip it up for you. You can see here that each cut is just the fat. And it kind of looks really cool when it's done too. 
So, oh, and my oven's preheating to 400 degrees. Did I already say that? I don't think I said that. But that's what's happening, it's, it's preheating. I have a roasting pan with a um, rack, and that'll keep the duck from sitting in the fat that drips down. So I'm just gonna continue this until I'm done, and I will come back on so you don't have to watch me do the rest of this, because, I mean, it gets boring right after a while. I mean, I'm not boring, but. Get to work, duck. Okay, my duck is scored. I'm gonna move it over a little. Do you wanna see what it looks like? That's what it looks like, scored. Um, and I am going to get my veggies prepped. I'm gonna have one yellow onion. This one's probably a little big for what I'm trying to do, um, but that's okay. I, I'll just use half of it if I can't fit the whole thing in there. No harm, no foul. All right, let's cut it in half, and I'm going to quarter it. These cavities can actually be surprisingly large. It's small. So I'm going to do um, onion and then lemon. Let me get rid of this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to quarter my lemon here and stick it right on in there. So I'm going to do half of it and then more onion. And I can see that I'm about out of space now. So I'm going to go ahead and put half of the lemon in there and then the other quarter of the onion and see where I'm at. And that looks like it stuffs it pretty well. I could come out to here, but there's really no, no reason to do that. Okay, next step. I am going to, on the inside, just sprinkle a little salt. Just gotta throw it back there and put a little thyme back there too. Then I have some cooking twine. I'm gonna take that out and tie the legs together. So I'm gonna take a good piece of cooking twine. It'll be too long and that's fine. I'd rather have enough than not enough. And I am going to take my legs and tie them together. Get off of there. Okay, so if you just do it this way, you make a little crossover and that'll keep it from slipping off. There you go. And just tie, you can tie a bow in it, tie a knot in it, tie whatever you want. Um, and that's it for tying it. You can take your wings and tuck them underneath. They should stay. But before I do that, I want to then gently salt this half, since I already did the underside and the inside. All right, that's done. And then same thing with my thyme. We're just going to sprinkle some, rub some, and that is basically it for our seasonings. I'm gonna bake it in three stages. Three. So you need a timer or an alarm on your phone, something to indicate that 25 minutes have passed. You're gonna start breast side up. So you're gonna just transfer it to your roasting pan and you're gonna tuck your wings under. Why do you tuck the wings under? So that they don't burn. Um, that the tips there are really small and they would burn pretty quickly and easily. Even at 400 degrees, those wing tips are gonna be brown and hard and crusty in a way that you don't want. Um, and the rest of it's not going to be ready. So try and get those wings tucked pretty well. You can actually bend them behind each other if I can get it to go. Let me show you how I did that. I took the wing and it's like almost like breaking its arm. There, like that. Um, and so I'm gonna stick this in the oven, 25 minutes. Then I'm gonna pull it out, flip it over, 25 minutes, pull it out, flip it over again, and that'll be another 15 to 30 minutes until we've reached an internal temperature of 180 degrees. Okay, 25 minutes is up. It's time to flip my duck over. Um, do this carefully. I've got some turkey lifters that I'm gonna use to do this. Um, I just don't want it to splatter or fall, but you can kind of see how it's starting to brown. Um, you can probably hear in the bottom of the pan all of the sizzling from the fat that's already dripped down. Um, and you can see my wingtips stayed nice and tucked, so that's good. Going right back in for another 25 minutes. Okay, duck is making progress. I don't know if you can hear all that sizzling. There is about um, a quarter inch worth of fat drippings on the bottom of this pan. Flipped it over, that's the last flip we're gonna do. So this should start to crisp up nicely. Um, we're gonna put it in, we're gonna temperature check it after 15 minutes and see where it's at. And we'll continue cooking it until it reaches 180 degrees. And I'm not gonna pop back on um, and keep temperature checking it. We're just gonna do it and then I will see you back here after I've taken it out because it's reached temperature and then let it rest for 10 minutes. So that's when I'll see you again. My duck 
is finally done. It hasn't quite finished cooling, but I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it off of my rack. I would like to show you how much fat there truly is on these ducks. If you've never cooked one, I should probably get rid of this rack, but we'll see if you can. Do you see? Oh, I can tip it. All of that fat. That's, yeah, lots of duck fat. Um, I am probably going to strain this. <laughs> I just turned my hands into bubbles. I might strain this and save the duck fat to cook other things in. Um, jury's out, we'll see. If you do, just run it through a mesh strainer, a fine mesh strainer. You wanna get it all the bits out of there and then store it in the fridge. So here we go. This is our beautifully roasted duck. I'm gonna see if I can tip the plate just a little bit. It's hot like this. It's so pretty. The golden color on this, it's just gorgeous. Who's ready for Christmas dinner? I am. I'm just going to take a little slice. Normally I put it on the cutting board, but I'm just doing a little slice to show you. Let me turn it so you can see the piece that I've cut. That is the interior of our cooked duck. It is gorgeous. Um, here is the cut off piece. It is so tender. This is going to be an amazing dinner. It is so tender, moist, juicy, flavorful. <sighs> Don't forget to score it. Just keep an eye on it as it cooks. I promise you're gonna love this. It is just delicious. Have a very merry, wonderful Christmas. From my kitchen to yours, happy holidays, and let's make food from food. That's one boy.